so in this uh, lecture uh, and a few forthcoming lectures we will discuss the uh, proof of lyapunov uh, theorem that we had seen so recall the lyapunov theorem which says that for the autonomous system x dot equal to fx f being a map from d to rn and d being a uh, subset of rn with the initial condition being in the uh, set d and origin being considered as the equilibrium point again inside the set d it said that if uh, we can have a continuously differentiable positive definite function defined in the set d such that its derivative is negative semi definite uh, along the system's uh, the system dynamics x dot equal to f of x then uh, the equilibrium point origin is uh, stable if this derivative v dot is uh, negative definite then the equilibrium point uh, which is the origin under origin that is under consideration is uh, asymptotically stable okay so we'll start with the proof of this theorem so from the statement of the theorem what is given to us is uh, we have a system x dot equal to f of x where f is a function that maps from maps points in d to rn and d is nothing but a subset in rn okay please note that f is uh, a lipschitz function uh, in d okay mm. now uh, let's say the initial uh, condition x of 0 is equal to a value x0 that is in the set d and uh, or the origin of uh, rn is essentially uh, contained in d and is uh, the equilibrium point for the autonomous system under consideration and suppose uh, for this autonomous system uh, suppose there exists a continuously differentiable function uh, v uh, that maps d to reals so v is a real valued continuously differentiable function with the property that v gives positive real values for all points in d except for the point zero where it gives you zero okay so v is a positive definite function along with that we also have that this function v that we have is such that v dot of x evaluated uh, along the system dynamics is going to be negative semi definite uh, for all points in the set d okay so this is what is given to us what we have to prove is basically uh, we have to establish the epsilon delta stability for the equilibrium point uh, x equal to 0 okay so what we have to prove is given any epsilon greater than 0 there will exist a delta which is of course a function of epsilon greater than zero such that the trajectory that starts in the delta ball around the uh, around origin will always stay inside this epsilon ball around the origin okay that is if x of zero belongs to b delta then x of t will belong to b epsilon for all t greater than equal to zero okay so i think in the previous lecture i said that we will see the proof in two parts uh, but uh, i missed one point so we will actually be seeing the proof in three parts the first part will be to establish that there is a positively invariant set inside the epsilon ball that we have in the interior rather in the interior of the epsilon ball so the invariant the we'll have a set which is a strict subset or which is a proper subset of the epsilon ball and also is positively invariant with respect to the system dynamics that we have second is we'll show that the solution of x dot equal to f of x with uh, x of 0 equal to x0 uh, exists where x0 is essentially a point in the uh, uh, invariant set that we have just found out okay and not only it exists but also is unique for all t greater than equal to zero 
and lastly we will show that there is a delta ball that we can find out such that uh, the epsilon delta stability holds thus establishing uh, the Lyapunov theorem okay so first establishment of a positively invariant set in the epsilon ball second given that the initial condition starts inside the positively invariant set will show that the solution to the uh, differential equation x dot equal to f of x that represents the autonomous system will exist for all t greater than or equal to 0 and third we will establish that there is a delta ball that will help us in uh, satisfying the epsilon delta stability condition given these all conditions are utilized and hence it will be uh, establishing the Lyapunov theorem. So we'll see the first part of the proof. The first part is we have to establish that there is a positively invariant set in the interior of B epsilon. Basically, uh, the set is a proper subset of B epsilon and is positively invariant. Okay. Now we have a um, domain uh, or a set D that is given in which the function has been defined so that means that the system evolves in that set uh, uh, d which is a subset of uh, rn okay now um, suppose you have epsilon greater than zero someone has uh, so let's say that there is uh, epsilon greater than zero and this epsilon is such that you are able to find the epsilon ball around origin uh, which is a subset of D okay is a proper subset of D because if you take a epsilon which includes points that are not in D then we do not have a system definition altogether okay but there uh, if there are points that are not in d then it means that at those points the system uh, the dynamics of the system uh, will not hold because what we have is x dot equal to f of x and f is a function that only maps those points uh, in d to rn which means that uh, the system is such that it will only evolve in d okay okay so we'll only uh, we'll consider epsilon uh, such that uh, b is uh, so the epsilon ball is a sub, uh, proper subset of d okay now the boundary of this epsilon ball is nothing but a set of all those points okay it is a set of all those points which are at a distance of exactly at a distance of epsilon from the origin okay and that is what we denote by this uh, do b epsilon this is the boundary of the b epsilon ball now any point that is on the boundary of the b epsilon ball will be such that the function v will map this point to a positive real value so v of x is greater than 0 right because this point belongs to d also and uh, uh, is a non zero point being a non zero point v of x will be positive that is greater than 0 that is what is been given, given to us now suppose you take a positive value positive real value a positive value r which is uh, less than equal to epsilon okay now take all those points which are at a distance r from the origin and evaluate or calculate the values that we would map to calculate the real values that we would map to these points okay so you take a point which is at a distance r from the origin see uh, to what value would this point be mapped to by this uh, continuously differentiable function continuously differentiable positive definite function v okay 
So do this for all the points which are at a distance r. You will get a set of positive values, positive real values corresponding to each point. Take the minimum of these values. Okay, again it would be a positive value. Let us label that this value is alpha. Okay, alpha is the minimum value that you have out of the continuously differentiable positive definite function for those points which are at a distance of r from the origin. r is any positive value that you are taking between 0 to epsilon, 0 excluded, epsilon included. Okay, you can take r equal to epsilon as well. Now, with the alpha defined, consider a positive value bit in the set 0 to alpha, 0 and alpha both excluded. Okay, let us label this uh, value as beta. So, beta is a positive value that is less than alpha, strictly less than alpha. Now, we construct a set omega beta, which has points from the epsilon ball, all those points from the epsilon ball, for whom the value vx, v of x is less than equal to beta. Okay, is a collection of all those points for whom the value v of x is less than equal to beta. Now, we need to prove two things about this particular set omega beta. One, this omega beta is a proper subset of the epsilon ball. Two, the set omega beta is positively invariant. Okay, so we'll start with omega beta being a proper subset of the B epsilon ball. So by construction of the omega beta set, the way we have constructed the omega beta set, it is definitely a subset of B epsilon ball. To show that it is a proper subset of the B epsilon ball, we have to show that the intersection between the set omega beta and the boundary of the B epsilon ball is essentially a null set. Okay. If um, that is if omega beta does not contain any points uh, from the boundary of the B epsilon ball, then omega beta will be a strict subset of uh, the epsilon ball. Okay. So, to prove this, uh, let us assume that omega beta actually has some points from the boundary of the B epsilon ball. So, omega beta is not a proper subset. Okay. So, in that case, there is at least one point in the omega beta set which is also on the boundary of the B epsilon ball. Now, if a point is on the boundary of the B epsilon ball, by definition, with if we set R to be equal to epsilon, by definition, the value that the point P is mapped to uh, by the function V will be greater than or equal to alpha and by definition alpha is greater than beta. So, what we have is V of P is greater than beta because P is a point that belongs to the boundary of the epsilon ball. Now, P is also a point that belongs to the omega beta set and from the construction of omega beta set, V of P will be less than beta. And both the inequalities cannot be satisfied simultaneously, which indicates that there cannot be any point in the omega beta set that belongs to the boundary of the epsilon ball. Okay, so omega beta lies entirely inside the epsilon ball, which is B epsilon. Okay, also notice that omega beta is a closed set and it is a bounded set which essentially will term this as omega beta is a compact set. Okay, so here we have omega beta to be a compact set. Now, the next question that we have is, is omega beta a positively invariant set? For this, we'll use the property that V dot of X is essentially negative semi-definite when X of T belongs to B. 
okay so we have v dot of x of t to be less than equal to 0 for x of t belonging to d this is what is given now from this what we know is at any time instant if we have a value of x v of x of t can never be more than v of x of 0 okay this is going to be true for all time t greater than equal to 0 because of the nature of v dot of x of t which is less than equal to 0. Now if x of 0 is a point inside the omega beta set then v of x of 0 is going to be less than equal to beta by definition of the omega beta set and also from the nature of v dot we have v of x of t to be less than equal to v of x of 0 for all t greater than equal to 0. This indicates that v of x of t is going to be less than equal to beta for all time greater than equal to 0 which essentially indicates that x of t has to belong to every instant of time the state vector that you get will always belong to the set omega beta. Okay. So if you recall the definition of positive invariance, if we are starting inside the set omega beta with x of 0 being in omega beta and we are showing that x of t will always remain inside omega beta, thus establishing that omega beta is a positively invariant set with respect to the system dynamics x dot equal to f of x. So this completes the first part. Uh, of the proof where we find we establish that inside the epsilon ball we will be able to find a positively invariant set the next would be to prove that the solution exists uh, for all time t greater than equal to zero if we start inside this uh, positively invariant set which is also compact as we have shown and then we will show that we will be able to find a delta ball such that the epsilon delta stability condition or the epsilon delta stability definition is satisfied for the origin. So we will stop here. Thank you.